This your boy Cash, I'm back at it again, man. Bring y'all some hardcore stories. These stories I'm finna bring to you, man. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Reason why I say it's crazy, cause it's a lot of dudes out there pretending to be something they're not. And everybody could relate to what I'm saying right now. Acting like they gangster, but they ain't gangster. They act like they living like that, but they not living like that. But one thing about it, when they get that gun in their hand, they'll kill up everything. See, I'm going to show you something, the other side of this. The other side is this, going to prison 17, 18 years old. When you walk up in there, man, and Joe was looking at you, eating you, so whistling at you like you're a bitch. You understand? And then, Nick, you ain't got no gun to fight back. You got to use your hands. So now let me see where you at. What you going to do? You know how to fight? You don't know how to fight, you ain't got no gun. And you end up, ain't no gun, ain't none of that. You gotta know how to use a knife or you gotta use your hand. See, the thing about it, people always come to me asking me, do, you ever, do I have I been in confinement? And I always tell them, I say, yeah, I've been in confinement a couple of times. I'm not proud of it, but I've been in there. And I don't like it. And I ain't trying to go back in confinement. You see what I'm saying? And I remember like it was yesterday, this white dude. He about like 135 pounds. Low, low skinny joke. You see what I'm saying? And the crazy thing about him was he run his mouth a lot. He always run his mouth to the police. He, he didn't give them who he talked crazy to. You see what I'm saying? Because all you're going to do is beat him and he's going to come right back again with the same bullshit. You see what I'm saying? So everybody know who he was. They're trying to stay away from him. See, I'm in confinement right now. I'm doing 60 days. Because they had a shit on the dome. They found some weed under my mattress. They locked me up. I'm in confinement. But see, what the good thing about me, man, God always found a way to bless me. I, had, I ended up going to confinement and I had a good roommate. My roommate was kind of person that he read books and we talk and that's what it was, you know what I'm saying? He was getting ready to go home. So that was a blessing. See, that same white boy that was in the dorm, me acting crazy, I saw him coming to the door. I don't know what, what he did. The police had him, they had the camera on him. Whatever he did, they, they were bringing it out to confinement. See, I'm going to show you something. See, the officers in DOC, you got to be careful how you deal with them. If you disrespect them, you're talking crazy to them, guess what? They'll find a way to get back at you. If they don't send another inmate to stab you, what they'll do is they'll set you up. If you go to confinement, they'll tell the other officers in confinement to put you in a room with a bad joker. And get what they did. That's what they did. They put him in a room with a big booty bandit. I'm talking about real hardcore booty bandit. This dude been doing that shit since he, so he been down 30 years, so he, all he do is wait. All he do is rape, rape white boys, black boys, don't give a damn who he rape. He just rape. He's a, he's a fucking rapist. You see what I'm saying? And that's what he do. And guess what they put in the room with him? They put that little young white boy in the room with him. I mean, that was crazy. When they brought that white boy in the room with him, and I look, I'm like, damn, why the hell they put him in the room with that dude? I knew something was going to happen. A week passed by and nothing. The next, another week passed by, we didn't hear nothing. We just hear him, the white boy, arguing in the window with other dudes trying to get, trying, trying to get food from another flap and all that shit. That, that was it. And it been going on like almost two weeks. And then one night I heard the white boy scream, Nah, I'm not with that. I'm not with that. Nah, nah, I'm not with that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not, I'm not with that. So when the white boy said he's not with that, he was like, It's like, I'm going to tell you something, the confinement was so quiet. You could, you could drop a pin, you could hear it. And that's a place where everybody's screaming and yelling. Now. Everybody, you could drop a pin, you could hear it. And then when the white boy said he's not with that, everybody was like, Whoa. They want to know what he's talking about. He said, I'm not with that. And the dude told him, Man, you smoked my dope. You ate all my food. Now you tell him you're not with this? And I would, the white boy said, yeah, I'm not with it. I'm going to pay you back. The man said, you're not going to pay me. You're going to pay me right now. That's when the tussle started in there. They were tussling in there. I'm talking about throwing punches. They, they tussle. Now I go hear all that bumping in the wall. And then, then after that, I heard a big thump, boom. And I ain't heard nothing. No, I ain't heard nobody say nothing no more. But you know, I'm going to show you something, right? You know how like somebody, when somebody in pain, they got a way of screaming, a loud voice came out, talking about so deep, it let you know this person in trouble. Yeah, like, ah, oh, yeah, loud. And then, guess what? You ain't hear it no more. The dude, man, that was in the room with the white boy, he started raping the white boy. He raped the white boy all night. And the officer that was supposed to do his round, he never came around. Because, you know, you feel like this is a family. What the hell am I walk around for? There's two people in the room. He raped the white boy. You see what I'm saying? And next morning when they came to do the ride, the police came around and said, everybody get up. When he got up, they seen blood everywhere. They called it in. They called it in. Put the, put, put the dude in the, put the booty bandit in. 
in the shower, put him in handcuffs, put him in the shower, and they called medical. Medical came and looked at the dude in the FDLE camp. When the FDLE camp, they asked anybody a question, did they hear anything, did they see nothing? I told him, I, ain't, I don't know nothing. I was asleep last night. You know what I'm saying? But just let you know, man, if you act like you're tough, act like you're a badass, and you end up going to prison, they might put you in a room with a dude like that. What would you do if you get caught up in a room like that? You, you don't know how to fight. What you going to do? You going to give it up or you going to fight for your life? That why I went far for your life. But at the end of the day, guess what? He lost his manhood. This your boy Cash. I'm back at it again, man. I don't know if you can handle these stories, man. These stories I'm bringing to y'all, man, stopping you from going in, going in prison, man. Getting caught up. Your son, your daughter, did not get caught up in the system. But the system's fucked up, man. And it's against us. It's your boy Cash. I'm back. I'm back and I'm bringing to y'all, man. Y'all ready to subscribe? Mm -hmm. Press that, that like and subscribe. Mm -hmm. Give it